I love this part. You get to make your own rules. Certainly, we want to govern those rules by values and belief systems that exist within consent culture. I'm going to come out strong right out the gate and say that the most important considerations you need to make is what are the circumstances of the situation. Looking at the situation and each individual's ability to make a clear and neutral decision without consequences, whether that's consequences to their perceived or real safety, their emotional well-being, their resources like money or grades. Let's use an example. Let's say you are in a group project with someone and they're super cute, they're super smart. You're like, wow, I like, like this person. I wanna get to know them better. I wanna maybe put their body close to my body. Taking power dynamics into consideration would be things like that person doesn't necessarily have the agency to not interact with you if you asking them out maybe made them uncomfortable or they wanted to reject you in some way, but they didn't feel like they could because it's like, ah, I got to see them at school like every day on this project. Like an example of flirting with somebody in consent culture in that situation would be waiting until the group project is over. Relevant circumstances to consider would also be things like the time of day. Those are all like IRL scenarios when we think about circumstances. When we're talking about online, based on how they respond is kind of the circumstances I would say are most relevant. If someone isn't very responsive, they aren't engaging with you, even if they are a bit, mixed signals typically are a no. You don't wanna keep pursuing somebody if they're giving you less than you know, equal energy. Knowing what you want and what you're available for is going to really inform the approach you take. The energy that you bring is gonna probably be a bit different if what you're looking for is a long-term relationship or I'm just trying to kind of hang out after this party. Because if consent culture is about people being able to make informed decisions, you can be straightforward or clear about what your intentions are. Ideally, the flirting and the hollering is successful. Like ideally you're compatible, they're interested too. You're able to both come to a conclusion about what it is that you're trying to do. So we know what we want, we know who we want. How do we do it? What do we do? We want to put our like most full self forward and confidence around that sort of thing comes from a place of knowing how you communicate best, knowing how you interpret information, knowing what your love languages are, like what are the ways that I'm really strong at showing love, showing affection, showing attention, and lean into those things. It's not just about what your communication style and your love language is, we have to speak to people in their communication style and what their love language is, that's different from being manipulative or misrepresenting yourself. That's about seeing someone else's whole and being like, how do I approach you in a way that you're gonna understand what it is that I'm trying to explore with you? I think we can make an important distinction too between like a holler, which is a cold call essentially, and then there's like, okay, we know each other, we have an interaction, we're talking, and then there's like flirting that exists within that. Because even if there's the holler and you start talking and maybe it feels like you're flirting, sometimes it can be unclear. As an example, like if that person is even into people of your gender or your sexuality. Like if I'm talking to a guy, I can't just assume that he's into women. We could just be pals. I mean, we're in a global pandemic. It can be really hard to tell whether someone's flirting with you. Part of consent culture and hollering and then flirting is acknowledging the fact that not everybody wears their like, you know, wears their gender or their sexuality on their sleeve. We never want to assume that because someone is of a certain gender or of a certain sexuality that they're interested in us. Also too, just because someone's flirting with you doesn't mean that they're interested and doesn't mean that they have to go out with you. Sometimes there just has to be the hard ask of, hey, like I'm interested in you. Are you interested in me? Sometimes flirting's just for fun. Pay attention to what type of energy they're giving and give that back. If someone is like, I wanna send you pics, be like, 
cute, I'm into that. Or I wanna send you pics, are you into that? If you're gonna comment on something on someone's body, even if it's like a tattoo or something they're wearing, ask for consent first. As soon as someone talks about our body, we become objectified, right? And somebody's level of comfort with that is not something that you necessarily can know without knowing that person. So ask first. Flirting within consent culture is reading signals and taking no's and understanding rejection, letting yourself or your friends or your therapist be the container for that rejection. It's not up to the person who's rejected you to hold space for your hurt feelings, your disappointment or whatever. You just say, thank you for your kind rejection and you keep it pushing. Ultimately, flirting with somebody, hollering at somebody, like. Ideally, it's fun. Ideally, it's something that brings excitement and joy into our lives. Flirting and hollering within his consent culture is about ensuring that everybody who's involved in the flirting and the hollering is also having fun, also having a nice time, also feels empowered to say yes or to say no or to say, let's follow up. The platinum rule, don't make assumptions. Don't assume someone's gender, don't assume their sexuality, don't assume their sexual interest, in different genders or sexualities. Don't subscribe to a heteronorm model where one person needs to be the pursuer and the other person needs to be pursued. All of that is messy-ish. That concludes this episode of Sexy Sexual Health Education. I'm gonna link some resources on the next page to some more like hard practical tips on things you can say or do when you're interested in somebody. But until next time.